Hello, 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 y'all. So, I'm back. Y'all are going to get two videos today. Okay, y'all. So, <clears throat> I wanted to come on and share with y'all my visit to the ER yesterday. The emergency room. Now, so, um, I told y'all about the problem I've been having with my stomach. I, mean, I ain't been able to eat anything. So, lately, certain things that I do eat have been causing me to have gas. And the gas is getting lodged up in my top stomach. I have several stomachs, but I'm pretty sure by the way it feels... <laughs> It is getting locked up in my top stomach, which is very painful. If you have experienced gas being locked in your intestine, you know I'm talking about some crucial pain. So, anywho, I have been um, dealing with this for about three days. So, yesterday, I was at the job, and it was just unbearable. Now, a lot of times whenever I'm sick or I'm hurting, um, you really won't know it because um, I'm able to, I can take a lot of pain and a lot of sickness, you know, and still try to carry on. So yesterday while I was at work, I ended up going to the restroom uh, twice yesterday and throwing up, cause my, but I'm not really throwing up anything because I haven't really been eating. So anywho, I leaves work early because the pain in my stomach is just unbearable. So I makes a visit to our wonderful ER. Baby, let me tell <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. You only go to our ER. No, baby, you don't go to our ER. I tell you that right there. But hey. I go to the ER, all right? So I'm in line. So while I'm standing in line, honey. This man comes up behind me. Well, he was already in there once I got in there. He comes up behind me and, and um he starts talking about, uh, he tells the people, he said, look, I served my country for 15 years. Is that going to make a difference? So what it was, the man had been waiting for a very long time. So he begins to talk to me. He said, you know, I served my country for a very long time. Then he says, by the way, ma'am, I'm drunk. Which I knew the man was drunk because you could smell the alcohol on him and you could tell he was drunk. So I'm standing there. I'm just saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he begins to tell me about how he, he said, ma'am, I'm very sick. He said, have you ever seen 90 people die at one time? I said, no, sir, ain't never seen 90 people Die at one time. I ain't never seen no people, a bunch of people. Well, I've had, I have seen people die before, but I've never seen a bunch of people die before. So he began to tell me about his little story when he was in the military and, you know, how bombs went off and he can still see the bombs and still hear the bombs. I mean, it was really, really sad. And then he asked me, Was I married? Of course, every drunk man in the world asks me, Am I married? I, I don't know why I just. <laughs> so sad. Why I got to attract drunk men? <sighs> okay, we're going to get past it. So he started asking me, do I want to get married? Why I ain't married? So I began to tell him, you know, I'm waiting on the Lord, you know, to send me a husband. Please, you ain't, and you ain't him, okay? But anywho, so the man begins to start cussing, you know, then talking, then talking about the Lord, then cussing. And, you know, I began to tell him, you know, he, you know, he was saying he got a problem with drinking. He said, you know, at least I'm not doing cocaine or heroin. He said, I just drink a lot. I said, well, the Lord will help you. Then he said, well, if the Lord will help me, why didn't he help them 90 people that I saw get killed? So I said, nothing. Because, you know, sometimes people that are intoxicated, they'll go from A to B, from 10 to 100, from 0 to 75 in 2.3 seconds, honey, okay? So, anyway, that was going on with him. So, his mother come up there. His poor mother. I felt so sorry for her because he cussed her out. Then he was crying. Then he started shaking. You know, then the security was trying to calm him down. That man was going through. His poor mama, she was an older lady, too. 
Because he was my age, but obviously he lived with his mom and she was taking care of him. Oh, honey, he just let her have it. The security had to keep coming in to calm him down, but he was giving it to his poor mama. So anyway, I give the people my little information. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Because that's what you do in the ER, honey. You wait. So, uh, but when I first got there, y'all, I only waited for about 10, 15 minutes. Then they called me, you know, asked me what was my problem. I told them I'm having abdominal pain. Then they, you know, and I give my insurance card, honey. So, um, then, you know, they took me in really, really quick after all that. And then they put me in a wheelchair and rolled me down to, uh, to the x-ray room. So once we get in the x-ray room, I'm rolling down. I mean, because it was really quick. I'm like, ooh, having good insurance to get you in and out, honey. I thought. So, um, they rolled me down to the, um, x-ray room. And when I got in the x-ray room, the woman said, um, so how long you been having chest pains? I said, chest pains? I said, I ain't having no chest pains. I said, my stomach is hurting. So she was like, um, oh, they got on this paper, you got chest pains. I said, no, honey, I ain't got no chest pains. I said, I need you to x-ray my stomach. So she was like, well, no, I can't x-ray your stomach. She said, I'm just here to do your chest. I said, well, ain't nothing wrong with my chest. It ain't hurting. Like every day, she said, well, you know, sometimes it's just procedure. We want to make sure everything's right. No, I said, no, I'm not paying for no x-ray for my heart because my heart ain't hurting. I said, my stomach hurting. So she was like, well, you can refuse it. I said, well, I refuse, honey, because I ain't nothing wrong. My heart ain't hurting now. Not today, no way. Sometimes I do have a little papillotations, you know. But right now, my chest ain't hurting. It's my uh, stomach that's hurting. So they wheels me back out, honey. I sits in that lobby, y'all. When I tell you, there is some sick. There were people that are sicker than me. There are some sick people. People are old people. If you make a visit to the hospital, honey, you might get saved. If you ain't saved and you visit the hospital, you might say, Lord, you know, I surrender all. Here I am, Jesus. But let me tell y'all something. There was a lady in there having a panic. She had a panic attack. That man was still in there cussing at his mama. And there was one man in there. He couldn't hardly see. He would get up and he would keep walking like into the wall. And his caregiver kept telling him, you're going the wrong way, going the wrong way. But he would just keep getting up, walking into the wall. A boy coming there, he, I don't know what it, I don't know if he almost cut his finger off or something. An old lady was in there. She was real, real sick, honey. And all of us was just waiting. So I'm looking at the man cussing his mama out, the woman having a panic attack. Then this other lady, she was in so much pain, she was just sitting there crying. Oh, and there was this little boy there. Lord, y'all know I love kids. This little boy was crying and hollering, not because he was sick, but because he wanted to run outside. And his mama had to hold him. And she holding him, and he just hollering and crying. Lord have mercy. So, honey, I'm sitting there witnessing all, you know, all this stuff going on in the hospital, honey. People is going through it, child. So, anyway... So I get to the ER because I leave work about maybe 12, 30, 1 o'clock yesterday. So I get to the ER around about 1 30, I want to say. So about between 1, 1 30 and 2 30, that's when they had took me down there to get them chest x rays and I didn't get them. So I sat in that lobby from 2, I want to say from 2 to almost 8 o'clock that night. Do you think them people ever seen me? Never. So I gets up. And then it's something how the people in the hospital have such nasty attitudes. You sick, dying, got so much going on, but they have such nasty attitudes, honey. So I gets up around by 730. And I asked the woman, yes, honey, I'm telling you. From 2 to almost 8 o'clock, I sit in that lobby in the ER waiting to be seen. It's, it's unbearable. So I get something, go tell the lady, ma'am, you know how much longer it'll be before they call my name. And she looks at me and says, ma'am, there's been people here. The longest person that's been here in the ER has been six hours. So I had to pause for a moment 
and I'm saved. I can't. So I looked at the lady. I said, ma'am, I didn't ask you that. I asked you, how long would it be before they call my name? So she proceeds to say, well, what's your name? So I tells her my name, honey. And then she tells me, well, I don't know how long. We have people in the lobby waiting. We have no beds in the back. There's people standing up in the back waiting for beds. So I don't know how long it'll be. I said, okay, ma'am, thank you. So I proceed to take my happy behind out the door. So I goes home, honey. So I had called my sister, my daughter, and my son, let them know, you know, where I was at. So they texted me and, you know, you okay, this, that, and the other. So my sister, I told her, she was like, what the doctor say? I said, honey, I left. <laughs> I told them I left, honey. So I went to the store and asked the pharmacy, what do they best prescribe for gas locked up in your intestines, honey? So that I had got me some phasing. It's right over there on my dresser, but I don't feel like getting up to get it. So I got, I think it's phasing. So I got me some phasing and Zantax. They told me to take two phasing and one Zantax. So I took the two phasing and one Fantax, y'all, and I tell you what, it worked. I feel like a million bucks, honey. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I feel like a million bucks, honey. I'm going to tell y'all the truth, honey. I, ooh, my gut, my intestines, honey. I'm about to destroy them. I am. I'm telling you. Because I shouldn't get gas like I do to, you know, lock up in my gut, honey. But I tell you, I had a day yesterday. Then I had to, and I said, I didn't want to sit at that emergency room all night long. I had to get up and be back to work early in the morning. And, you know, I, I have to be on time to work. I can't be coming in late or nothing. If I sit at the ER all night, I'd be tired. But I thank God. That I was able to doctor on myself that night and get myself together. But honey, they some they some sick, troubling. And you know what? People are suffering not from just like your physical, physical needs. People are suffering mentally. Their minds. People, I'm telling their minds because to see someone go through a panic attack and then the lady that was with, I don't know if it was her sister, mother, I don't know. She was trying to talk her and calm her down, you know, and then the man kept getting up, like walking into the wall, and the other man that, you know, kept hearing the bombs go off in his head from the war. Honey, I I had to sit there and start saying, Lord, keep my mind. Oh, Lord, keep my mind. Honey, we got to pray. Lord, keep me in my right mind lord help me to remember who i am excuse me help me to remember who you are and then who i am i'm telling because when you lose this here when this here stop tick tocking baby you out you is out and i'm telling you oh when you lose your mind honey you is out I'm telling you. So that's my prayer. God keep me in my right mind. I and those people that I, I seen at the ER, they was on my heart's real heavy. I've been praying for them. That God help them and help that mother with that grown son that's suffering from all this stuff. And you know, the man even said, he said, Baby, I'm sick. He said, I am sick. And he said, People think I'm crazy because I can hear these bombs going off in my head. But um, I'm praying for him. I'm just praying, hun. I'm just praying. It's by the grace of God that we got any any ability to do anything. You know what I'm saying? Any abilities. By the grace of God. So you ought to always, excuse me, we ought to always be thankful every day. Every day. If you're able to get up, put your own clothes on, feed your own self. Remember how to get to and fro from your job or wherever you got to go. You ought to tell God, thank you for one more day I'm in my right mind. Oh, I don't take it for granted. Hun, I'm, I'm telling you, I was telling folks today, I'm happier than a pig in a mud hole. Why? Because God has been so good to me. 
He's been extraordinary good to me. And I don't know why, because I haven't always been good to him. But the Lord has been good to me, y'all. He's been so good to me. He's blessed me over and over again. Over things that I've suffered in life. Just like you, we all got suffering testimonies. When I lost everything I had in that flood. And how my my family, my sister, was right there for me. Right there. I hear so many stories of people that have suffered from that flood. And some people are just now getting back in their homes. They, their family wouldn't even help them. They had brothers and sisters and aunts and cousins. Mamas and daddies that wouldn't even open the door to them. They had to go stay in motels. But I, God placed a sister in my life. Or any of my family, really. My main family. My, my sister, my daddy, <laughs> my daughter, and my, um, well, my son is in Germany, so you know I ain't going to Germany, honey. But I thank God for my sister. You know, you got some family that act funny, want to charge you a whole bunch of money to stay, and act fun. None. I ain't experienced none of that. None of that. So I thank God for my sister, for my family. I mean, God is just good to me. I ain't never been hungry a day in my life. I know you can't tell it by looking at me, can you? Don't, don't you say it. <laughs> but y'all, the Lord is just good to us. He's just so good to us. So many people suffering. He's good to us. That's why I have to serve him. Mm-mm-mm. But anywho, Lord, I've been on here about 20 minutes. I just wanted to come on and share my little ER story with y'all that I had on yesterday. And today when I ate, I just got through actually eating those grits and uh, eggs. That was the, the first solid meal I've had. This is the fourth day. Because I haven't been really able to eat like that. Because everything was making me so gassy, you know. But um, I, I just thank God. Oh, I just thank him, honey. Tell me what more can I do? Y'all remember that song? What more can I do? do, 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 do. Don't know the rest of the words. But Lord, what more can I do? Be my sheep. That's it. Be my sheep. Be good to people. Love people. Don't hold grudges. Don't ever walk in unforgiveness. Forgive everybody for everything. And Lord knows that ain't easy. Honey, I'm a witness. I know it ain't easy because I've had to deal with that too. All right. Just wanted to come on here and chit chat. This is almost like a YouTube live. It seemed like it anyway. But I just want to tell y'all about my ER experience. Sometimes take some time out of your day and go visit the hospital. Mm-hmm. It'll make you be more grateful or more thankful. There's some serious, serious suffering out here. All right, I'm getting ready to go. I'll talk to you guys later. Toodles.